Why do so many Christians resist accepting Calvinism? A simple online search produces several videos of prominent Calvinistic scholars answering this very question. But in reality, there are only two possible answers to that question. If Calvinism is an error, the reason most Christians resist it is because they have good discernment. If, however, Calvinism is true, the ultimate reason most resist it is because God sovereignly and unchangeably decreed their resistance for His own glory. As most prominent Calvinistic confessions state, God from all eternity did, by the most wise and holy counsel of His own will, freely and unchangeably ordain whatsoever comes to pass, which would include, of course, Christians' resistance to Calvinism. So, if Calvinism is true, then God has predestined most of his own children to resist his truth so as to glorify himself. The very idea that God unchangeably predestines his own children to reject his own truth for his own glory is so intuitively false that I don't need to refute it. I just need to make sure everyone understands that's what Calvinism entails so they know to reject it. But what do prominent Calvinists say is the reason that most Christians resist adopting their doctrines? Why are so many Christians against and actively against these concepts? They don't know the Bible. <laughs> it's not because they know too much of the Bible that they have come to this position. It's because they know too little of the Bible that they have come to this conclusion. And it, it's really their lack of knowledge of the full counsel of God as taught in the Scripture. And so, to answer the question, why do so many resist, it's, it's a, a lack of knowledge of Scripture, and it's also pride and arrogance. Um, and th these truths are the great pride crushers. Um, that leave all of us on our knees before the throne of grace and saying, Why me, Lord? Um, there are two fundamental things, I think, that people find it very hard to leave semi-Pelagianism and, and embrace Augustinianism. The first is that they sense in the doctrines of grace that that theology of Calvinism teaches a corrupt view of God, a God who is not good, a God who may be sovereign, but he's not fair. Because he, the idea that people have is that he arbitrarily chooses to save some, but not others. And that puts a shadow on the integrity of God, and people really struggle with that. And it takes a board over the head and the Bible to get you to see that your view of God is not high enough. It's not, you haven't really, really understood how righteous he is, how holy he is. So the question was why most Christians resist adopting Calvinism. Let's summarize each of the points these Calvinists gave. One, we lack Bible knowledge. Two, we are too prideful and need a board over the head. Three, we think Calvinism makes God seem unfair, arbitrary, and lack integrity, but that's because our view of God is just too low. Must it be pointed out that if Calvinism is true, that the reason that we as non-Calvinists lack Bible knowledge is because that is what God sovereignly and unchangeably decreed? And the reason that we are apparently too prideful and need a board over our head is again because God sovereignly and unchangeably decreed for us to be prideful. And the reason that our view of God is just too low, again, if Calvinism is true, must be because that is what God sovereignly and unchangeably decreed for most of his own children. Um, and at the end of the day, God is sovereign over who believes his sovereignty. And we're dependent upon God to open people's eyes and allow them to see the truth. So I, I can't open people's eyes. I can't open their hearts. Only the Spirit of God can do this. So as I present this, 
um, I need to keep that in mind, that I can only take it to the ear, but God's got to take it to the heart uh, for them to receive. So ignoring the logical problem with the idea of God ordaining most of his own children to resist truth, let's go through each of these points one by one. Do non-Calvinists really just have less knowledge of the Bible than Calvinists? If we simply add more knowledge of the Bible, will people inevitably become Calvinistic? Of course not. That's just silly. Many Calvinistic and non-Calvinistic scholars throughout human history have had a vast knowledge of the Bible. The Calvinists on the left side of the screen are not more or less knowledgeable of the Bible than the non-Calvinists on the right side of the screen. In fact, even Calvinistic historians admit that most scholars prior to St. Augustine in the 5th century taught a free will theology that stood in opposition to what we know as Calvinism today. And what about people like me and the thousands of others who once accepted Calvinism to be true, only later to reject it after gaining more knowledge of the Bible? Did God decree for some of his children to accept truth for a while and then reject it later in life? What would be the point in that? You see, this is not about knowledge. It's about rightly interpreting what we know. This brings us to the second point. Are non-Calvinists more prideful than Calvinists? What group of Christians has most typically been known for their arrogance and harsh treatment of others? Even Google anticipates the question because apparently it's asked so often. Observe. Calvinistic pastor John Piper was asked the question, why are Calvinists so negative? Here's his reply. And certain kinds of minds are drawn to that, and those kinds of minds tend to be argumentative. So uh, the intellectual appeal of the system of Calvinism has an appeal to a certain kind of, of intellectual person, and those persons don't tend to be the most warm, fuzzy, tender people, and therefore they have a greater danger of being hostile or being gruff or being abrupt or being insensitive or being intellectualistic and not just confess that. It's, it's a sad and terrible thing that, that that's the case. Some of them aren't even Christians, I think. I think you can embrace a system of theology and not even be born again. We appreciate John Piper's honesty and willingness to stand against those who act arrogantly towards other Christians. But in this clip, he admits this is a tendency for those who adopt the Calvinistic worldview. I'm saying Calvinism has a problem, and it's not the doctrines, it's not the theology. It's us. It's us. Yeah, that's it's right. It's us Calvinists. And I, I think total depravity highlights. So why are there arrogant Calvinists? Well, because total depravity is real. And well said. It's, it's our own poison pill. This has been a tendency throughout history. In fact, Calvinists were more likely to use torture or capital punishment against theological opponents. Also, historically, Calvinists were more likely to own slaves and oppose the efforts of abolitionists. Please hear me. I am not saying that modern-day Calvinists would support such things, but only that this tendency is more common among those who affirm a deterministic ideology, both now and in our past. Now, while I don't believe any true Christian would pridefully boast in their salvation, which doctrinal system is really most likely to give rise to pride and boasting? The system that says anyone can come and be saved, or the system that says only the chosen ones, given a special unique gift of grace, can come and be saved? Great singers can become prideful, arrogant, and boastful due to a gift uniquely given to them by God. But if everyone could sing equally well, there would be no reason to boast simply because some chose not to sing. On Calvinism, the ability to believe and be saved is uniquely given to some and withheld from all others, which could lead to pride or a feeling of being special and elitist. Though in my experience, Calvinists do not always act this way, of course. 
Which brings us to the third point. Do non-Calvinists think that Calvinism makes God seem unfair, arbitrary, and lack integrity because their view of God is just too low? First, it should be noted that words have meaning. The word arbitrary simply can mean subject to individual will or judgment without restriction, contingent solely upon one's discretion. We maintain that Calvinistic election fits that definition of arbitrary, which is God's unconditional choice to save some and not others before creation, for unknown reasons, based totally on his own discretion and without any regard to anyone outside of himself. That is arbitrary. And by definition, if something is arbitrary, it is unfair. If God ultimately controls everyone's thoughts, actions, and choices, and yet he controls some people to act in such a way as to give them eternal life, and others to act in such a way as to deny his provisions of grace and mercy so as to receive eternal condemnation, that is unfair. And if God is said to be unfair and arbitrary, does that bring into question his integrity? Of course it does. But is that conclusion based on a lower view of God? The Calvinist is making a fallacious argument called question begging. Whoever's view of God is wrong has the lower view of God. So let's ask that question. Who has the lower or incorrect view of God? That would depend on the standard you are using to measure. For instance, if the height of one's view of God is measured by his power and control of his creation, then the height of one's view is based upon how controlling God is over people's lives and decisions. If, however, the height of one's view of God is measured by self-sacrificial love and compassion for his creation, then one's view of God is measured by how loving he is towards all people. We believe God is most glorified not at the expense of his creation, but at the expense of himself for the sake of his creation. It is God's choices that best reveal his character, not his abilities. His ability to control does not supersede his choice to create and love. God is not seeking to display his glory by means of wrath on vessels that he himself ultimately controls. God is already maximally glorious, which is best demonstrated by his self-sacrificial love for each and every undeserving person created in his image. We believe God is most glorified in the grace shown to all his enemies, not his ability to control them. The cross is the central climactic event in all of human history. And it magnified not the control or power of God over all people, but his self-sacrificial love for all people. Our view of God is measured not by how controlling he is over his creation, but by how loving he is for his creation, despite our free choice to sin against him. I agree with Austin Fisher, who wrote, I have noticed that the primary concern for Calvinists is making sure humans can't boast in salvation, whereas the primary concern for free will theism is a recognizably good God. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 6. Please like and share this broadcast, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Help us spread the news of God's love and provision for all people. Also, we encourage you to visit our website at soteriology101.com. In the top right corner, click the support link to become a monthly donor or to give a one-time donation. Also, if you're looking for a higher education, we recommend Trinity Seminary. You can find more information at the classroom link there at soteriology101.com.